Imagine a colossal structure floating gracefully in the vast expanse of space, serving as a testament to human ingenuity and international cooperation. This awe-inspiring creation is none other than the International Space Station ISS, a magnificent multi-nation construction project that has captivated our collective imagination. More puzzling than its construction, perhaps, are the number of cover-ups that have been associated with the ISS and NASA. So, despite the grandeur reflected in its enormity and ingenuity, it seems the ISS also hides some truly unnerving secrets. Join us today as we pull back the curtain on one of humanity's biggest secrets. Stepping into the ISS is like stepping inside a house with five bedrooms, two bathrooms, a gymnasium, and a captivating bay window that frames the awe-inspiring vista of space. Now, envision all of this floating gracefully above Earth, nearly a million pounds in weight as it orbits our planet, stretching its dimensions to encompass the vastness of knowledge and collaboration. The space station offers ample room for six courageous astronauts to call it their temporary home. Its sheer size is enough to blanket an entire football field, including the end zones, making it a colossal structure suspended amidst the stars. Within its walls, a harmonious blend of scientific exploration takes place. Science labs from the United States, Russia, Japan, and Europe come together, each contributing their expertise to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos. These labs serve as havens for astronauts, where groundbreaking research and discoveries are brought to life. Delving into the intricate makeup of the space station, we encounter its multifaceted parts, referred to as modules. Acting as the building blocks of this extraordinary structure, the modules possess vital components that breathe life into the station's functioning. Within the space station, nodes play a crucial role in connecting its diverse modules, fostering the seamless flow of resources, information, and movement. These vital junctures enable the space station to function as a harmonious microcosm, where astronauts work and live in unity. As the station gazes outward, solar arrays adorn its sides, tirelessly collecting the sun's energy and transforming it into life-sustaining electricity. The station also sports robot arms that extend out into space, assisting in construction and scientific experiments. And let us not forget the docking ports, akin to doors that elegantly link the space station to visiting spacecraft. These portals serve as conduits for new crews and visitors to enter the station, warmly embracing them within its embrace. The Russian Soyuz, a testament to human ingenuity and engineering prowess, ferries astronauts to the space station through these very ports. Moreover, these docking points serve as conduits for the seamless transfer of essential supplies, nurturing and sustaining the station's inhabitants. That then, of course, begs the question. Just what has been docking at the ISS all this time? And more importantly, why has NASA taken so long to detect it? The future of the International Space Station now, mysteriously enough, remains uncertain. Although current plans extend its operation until at least 2024, discussions are underway among the partners to explore the possibility of further extensions. NASA has already granted approval for the ISS to remain operational until 2030, but Russia has expressed its intention to focus on constructing its own space station around 2028, implying a potential departure after 2024. What possible reason could Russia have for abandoning the ISS? Could it have something to do with the notorious happenings surrounding the space station? Keep in mind, operating the ISS requires a meticulously coordinated effort, with mission control centers in Houston and Moscow providing invaluable support to the crew aboard the station. A payload control center in Huntsville, Alabama further enhances the oversight and management of this technological marvel. 
Moreover, international mission control centers in Japan, Canada, and Europe contribute their expertise to ensure the smooth functioning of the ISS. These mission control centers serve as the nerve centers, orchestrating the intricate dance of human exploration and scientific discovery. Despite all the mystery and intrigue surrounding it, the International Space Station stands as a testament to our boundless potential. It represents the triumph of international collaboration, pushing the limits of human knowledge and serving as a beacon of hope for future generations. But, ironically enough, despite all of our advancements in technology, we remain hopelessly, or perhaps willingly, in the dark about unidentified anomaly encounters. Take, for example, the recent developments in the United States. The US government has begun keeping a close eye on an astonishing number of potential encounters with unidentified aerial phenomena, commonly known as UFOs. Sean Kirkpatrick, the director of the Pentagon's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, recently revealed that the Pentagon is currently tracking over 650 of these intriguing cases, a significant increase from the 350 reported in an earlier intelligence report. As if this wasn't enough to spark your curiosity, Kirkpatrick further disclosed that approximately half of these cases have been identified as having anomalous and fascinating value, meaning there is definite merit to them. This naturally begs the question, why the sudden shift in narrative after decades of denying the existence of UFOs? So, what happens next? Kirkpatrick explained that the real challenge lies in determining how much concrete evidence they have for these prioritized cases. With so many reports to sift through, they need to establish the extent of the available data. The goal is to gather as much information as possible in order to shed light on these enigmatic encounters and uncover patterns that might help explain the unresolved cases. During the Senate Armed Services Subcommittee hearing, Kirkpatrick provided a tantalizing glimpse into the world of unidentified aerial phenomena by sharing declassified videos of two cases. The first video, captured by an MQ-9 drone in the Middle East in 2022, displayed a small orb gracefully transversing the sky. The object entered and exited the camera frame, captivating the attention of those observing. Despite the mesmerizing footage, this particular case remains unresolved due to the lack of additional evidence beyond the video. The second video, filmed earlier this year in South Asia, showed an object passing by two MQ-9 drones. The captured footage appeared to reveal a propulsion trail initially deemed truly anomalous by Kirkpatrick. However, after painstakingly analyzing each frame, his office made a surprising discovery. The truly anomalous object turned out to be a mere shadow image. It was actually the heat signature from the engines of a commuter aircraft that happened to be in close proximity to the drones. So, there is at the very least a need to carefully analyze each encounter. As the hearing progressed, one thing became abundantly clear. The focus is not solely on extraterrestrial life. Kirkpatrick emphasized that, thus far, there is no credible evidence supporting the existence of extraterrestrial activity, off-world technology, or objects defying the known laws of physics. However, he did raise concerns about potential technological advancements by foreign countries like Russia and China. In a handful of cases, he speculated that these episodes might be indicative of their progress in developing advanced capabilities. Such cases are promptly handed over to the intelligence community for further investigation. But despite the Pentagon's continuing hard stance on UFOs, that still doesn't explain all the unexplainable occurrences surrounding the ISS. In one intriguing twist back in 2016, an unidentified object materialized on a NASA livestream, captivating the imaginations of viewers worldwide before the NASA feed inexplicably severed, unleashing a flurry of conspiratorial wonder. 
In the cryptic footage captured on July 9th and unveiled to the world through the enigmatic realm of YouTube, this mysterious entity emerged, breaching the Earth's atmosphere with an unnerving, never-before-seen grace. Whispers of a possibility arose as viewers pondered the nature of this celestial phenomenon. Many asked, could this ethereal visitor be a mere meteor or something far more extraordinary? As the footage spread like wildfire, emboldened by the vigor of social media, even earthly news outlets such as the Daily Mail, the Huffington Post, and Fox News were entranced by this riddle from beyond. The cosmic ripples reached far and wide, capturing the attention of the UK Express, which proclaimed in bold, captivating letters, Shock alien claim. NASA cuts the ISS live feed moments after UFO appears. Rumors also swirled about the mysterious Chinese space cargo, Tiangong-1, taking an unexpected path and triggering speculation about its hidden intentions. Astronomers and conspiracy enthusiasts couldn't resist imagining what secrets might be concealed behind the veil of secrecy surrounding its descent. Yet, amidst the clamor of speculation, NASA, the harbinger of scientific reason, sought to douse the flames that were being fanned by the wild speculation on the internet. Their spokesperson, in measured tones, dismissed the notion of extraterrestrial visitors with a resolute denial. We have never seen UFOs in the popular sense, they affirmed to popular mechanics, seeking to extinguish the allure of the unknown. They explained the mundane reality behind the interrupted stream, attributing it to the automated nature of the high-definition Earth viewing experiment and the unpredictability of signal loss. Despite NASA's attempt to debunk the claims, the persistent UFO hunters remain undeterred, convinced that a hidden conspiracy lay beneath the agency's explanations. Citing previous encounters, they highlighted the notorious diamond-shaped UFO that loomed near the space station, capturing attention worldwide. As the camera focused on the mysterious object, the footage mysteriously turned blue, fueling suspicions of a cover-up. Scott C. Waring of UFOsightingsdaily.com dismissed NASA's efforts, asserting that the truth remained obscured and the public's curiosity persisted. This wouldn't be the first time that a potential extraterrestrial encounter had been caught on NASA's footage. Allow us to take you to 2012, when an extremely shocking event unfolded, captivating the attention of both skeptics and believers alike. On September 11th, a vigilant YouTube user named Daniel of Doria, armed with curiosity, unearthed extraordinary footage from the ISS's live camera feed streaming across the boundless web. This user guided our attention to a faint, elongated white form, accompanied by a neat succession of dim white dots dancing against the backdrop of space just below the curvature of our mesmerizing Earth. The video title boldly declares an amazing UFO mothership, a vessel releasing a fleet of enigmatic orbs, all captured on the ISS's live feed. Could it be that the International Space Station, in a serendipitous twist of fate, stumbled upon a celestial enigma, an interstellar space station hovering clandestinely nearby? Or does the blurry streak, meticulously scrutinized by UFO hunters in newly discovered NASA footage filmed through the space station's window, merely point toward a reflection in the vast expanse of the cosmos? Such an extraordinary revelation would indeed leave us breathless. However, UFOologist extraordinaire Mark D'Antonio, a revered figure in the realm of photo and video analysis for the mutual UFO network, MUFON, approached this tantalizing enigma with a discerning eye. Having meticulously scrutinized thousands of ISS photographs and videos purported to harbor UFO encounters, he believed the faint white marks witnessed in this footage to be far from extraordinary. Instead, they embody a familiar sight, a clear reflection simmering upon the window of the ISS. 
all of these supposed encounters had seemingly innocent explanations. But the next encounter is one that remains unsolved, and perhaps more interestingly, hotly debated to this day. On January 7, 1948, Thomas Mantell, a skilled aviator with combat experience and numerous honors, including the Distinguished Flying Cross and four Air Medals, was leading a flight of three other pilots from the Kentucky Air National Guard's Flight C, 165th Fighter Squadron, when they received a request from Godman Commander Colonel Guy Hicks to investigate the UFO sightings. Mantell and two other pilots climbed to an altitude of 15,000 feet, while the fourth pilot continued to Standerford Field. By 1.15 p.m., hundreds of people in central Kentucky had already reported seeing the UFO. Weather conditions that day were described as partly cloudy, with high-altitude cirrus clouds, calm winds, mild temperatures, no precipitation, and excellent visibility. Investigative efforts were made to uncover the truth behind Mantell's tragic pursuit. Meteorological records were examined, and astronomers were consulted to determine the positions of Venus and Jupiter in the sky at the time. However, these investigations failed to provide a conventional explanation. It was clear that Mantell's sighting couldn't be attributed to Venus alone. Witnesses from various locations in Kentucky reported their sightings to state police, prompting Fort Knox military police to be notified. Personnel at Godman Army Airfield observed the object as it traveled south from Irvington to Owensboro before reaching Godman. Two tower personnel described the UFO as a white, round object resembling an ice cream filled cone or parachute. Mantell radioed the tower at 2.45 pm, confirming that he had spotted the object at 14,000 feet. He provided updates as he climbed higher, noting that the object appeared to be metallic and of tremendous size. However, at around 3.30 pm, the other two pilots had to turn back due to a lack of oxygen, while Mantell continued his pursuit. Communication with Mantell ceased around 3.50 pm, and 10 minutes later, sightings of the object were reported by neighboring communities south of Fort Knox. At 5 pm, debris from Mantell's aircraft was discovered in Shelby County, southeast of Louisville. Investigators found that his seatbelt had been shredded and his watch had stopped at 3.18 pm. Initial assessments by the Air Force suggested that Mantell had been chasing Venus, as a similar incident had occurred previously. However, meteorological records disproved this theory. Speculation ran wild, with some reporters suggesting that aliens had shot down Mantell due to feeling threatened. This speculation was fueled by the famous UFO crash at Roswell, New Mexico, which had occurred six months prior. Ultimately, Air Force investigators concluded that Mantell likely suffered from oxygen deprivation, causing him to pass out at around 25,000 feet. His aircraft continued to climb before descending in a high-speed nosedive to the ground. This conclusion, however, did little in the way of facing facts. Many asked how a pilot as experienced and skilled as Mantell could make such a rookie mistake. Further questions were asked about the shape that Mantell and his aircraft were found in. Nothing seemed to line up, at least in the Air Force's explanation. Various theories emerged over the years, with some suggesting that Mantell may have been pursuing a Navy Skyhook balloon from Project Skyhook, a classified program conducted during the same period as the Roswell and Fort Knox incidents. However, there is no concrete evidence to support or refute this theory. Mantell's case is one that perplexes and stirs debate to this day. What happened to him? Was there a cover-up? Even the Pentagon itself admits to the existence of UFOs, something that both NASA and Air Force have been denying for decades. So one only wonders, what else have they been hiding from us?